Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we are going to bring out the GIMP. Now if you've never heard of it, GIMP I believe stands for GNU or General Image Manipulation Program. Uh, it is an open source 2D Photoshop type application. It's been around for decades, perhaps hundreds of years at this point in time. And we're talking about it today because a new beta was released and it's actually a pretty consequential beta. We are looking at beta 2.99.2. Now, we never actually got public versions of anything earlier than that. So even though it sounds like a pretty insignificant beta being a 0.2 release, this is actually a pretty huge deal. And what you're seeing here is GIMP being powered by a completely new graphic toolkit. It is being powered by GTK 3. Previously, it was powered by GTK 2. Two. And there's a lot of significance in that move. Now, one of the things that's going to come with that is support for Wayland graphic servers on Linux machines. It's not quite 100% there yet, but it is coming. We're also getting some real nice improvements. What you're seeing in front of you is me screen capturing this at 4K. And this is one of those areas where the GIMP used to suck. When it came to high definition monitors, high DPI displays, it always did a pretty poor job of it. And in the past, what they did is they created basically a hack or a workaround. And this was a limitation of the, GDT, uh, the GTK libraries. So what they did is they made really big icons, medium icons, small icons, and you had to pick your icon set and your font size, and that's how you scaled up. Now it's got full proper HDPI support, I don't really like the way they implemented it, to be honest, but it is there. So what they've done, you can see it here running just fine on my machine. This is at 4K resolution, and in normal mode, you wouldn't be able to read any of this. The problem is they've actually hooked it into your system settings. So in order to get it to look like this, I actually had to come into my display settings and really crank up the size. So it's by changing the system level sizes that changes the way things look. So if I cut, actually, I'm not going to do that during a video recording but it is pulling your scaling settings from your global level. Now this should mean it just works. The problem is if you want it to get a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, you have to do this at a system wide setting. They really should put in some kind of a way to increase the, the DPI support directly inside of the application, something like a control plus to zoom in, zoom out the UI. But regardless, it is nice to see this new HDPI scaling. We also have new icon sets and new displays here with some new options and theming options. Come on into the um, preferences section under the editing and you will find down here under theme categories, we've got a couple of new options here. Now, previously dark themes wasn't really something they could support and it is in place now. So you've got the use dark theme variant option available here. As you can see, I am using a dark theme right now. We also have theme settings for uh, color, and symbolic, so you can see here if you want colored icons or the black and white symbol icons, you do have a choice between those two things. Otherwise, it is pretty much the GIMP that you know and love or maybe don't know or love. Uh, it is, again, an open source kind of Photoshop-esque application. So if you need to do uh, content creation or image touch-up, manipulation and so on, uh, GIMP is one of the long-running options out there. Where if you're looking more for like that painterly effect, you're probably gonna be looking more at something like Krita. Uh, GIMP more competes with, like I said, Photoshop, Paint.net, those kind of applications. And it is one of the big flaws with GIMP in the past was the UI and the performance. And those are things that are definitely being addressed. So now we're going to hop on over, take a look at the release notes for GIMP itself, GIMP 2.99.2. .2, and we are going to see some of the highlights here. This gets into a lot more details. We're not going to really get into the weeds on this one. So first off, we have GTK 3 based user interface support which is going to be very fundamental to GIMP 3.0. So this is sort of a preview for that with native support for Wayland and high DPI displays. Again, they do hook the high DPI into your system settings, which is a little irritating because that makes everything big, but uh, it's definitely a first step. Uh, major refactoring and cleanup, uh, a new plugin based API that has uh, kind of a double edged sword. A couple of things in this actually are a bit of a double edged sword because um, GIMP has been around for so long. There are so many plugins out there, and then there's also uh, so many themes out there. The new uh, GTK3 based user interface actually breaks those existing themes, so you're going to have to create new ones uh, in that regard. And ditto for plugins. The plugins codes are going to break for some of the old Python based plugins that are out there. There is a porting process involved. But on the upside, you can now create plugins using Python 3, JavaScript, Lua. And to be honest, I have no idea what a Vala is. And I thought I knew every programming language out there. Uh, but whatever Vala is, it can be used for creating plugins in uh, GIMP. Gonna have to look that one up. Uh, we have more color space invasion, uh, render caching available for better performance. Again, that's a big part here too. One of the things that really held back the GIMP other than its user interface 
was the performance. So we should see performance gains in that regard as well. We get to a heck of a lot more detail about all the individual tasks here. Uh, so we got some improve, improvements to the input device support as well. Uh, Wayland isn't considered to be there yet, so isn't a feature you should use. It's a way that I understand, I'm not a Linux guy, but it seems like Wayland is an alternative, say, to like X11 servers, I think. I may have that wrong or whatever, but uh, GTK3 support should get Wayland support for free, but there's some, some glitches and bugs that they acknowledge right now. So that is there. Also, again, the plugin API has changed. Um, so that is going to break some of the existing uh, stuff out there. Actually, I believe it's going to break most of the existing plugins out there. Um, so you can get in here, learn more details about what all the individual changes are here. Go into some more detail than what we just covered, in fact. So if you're interested in learning more, I will, of course, link to this article in the link document down below. If you want to go ahead and run uh, GIMP, you basically head on over to the download section, like so, and then you search for this guy right here. Uh, get in on our development uh, downloads page right here, um, and it auto sorts for what your OS is. So in this case, it's downloading for 64-bit Windows, but it also has downloads available for uh, GNU Linux, OS X, um, and of course, various different versions of Microsoft Windows. Also be sure when you take a look at it, uh, there's some sections in the installer when you're picking uh, that add a whole lot of size. So for example, if you are an English speaker and you don't need the translations, you can basically cut the install size by half by turning that off. So just one of those things to be aware of when you're doing the installation. Uh, download itself, really small, 60 or 70 gig, uh, megabytes kind of thing. Uh, and installed with translations turned off, turned into about three or 400 megabytes, nothing too, too big. Uh, again, this is an open source project. If you want to contribute towards it, it is under the GPL public license. It is definitely one of the long running uh, products out there. And it's nice to see them working on the fundamental level stuff. So like I said, this, this sounds like a very minor release, but as you can see, it's actually quite a big jump since the last version. So. Uh, we've gone from 2.10 to 2.99.2. It does believe it does appear that they've uh, switched their numbering schemes here, but this is mostly because I do believe pretty much the next version, or very soon the next version, is going to be uh, GIMP 3. And again, GIMP 3 was going to be all about getting that GTK stuff working. So that is a big part of this particular release. And again, if you want to learn more, do check out the release notes. So there's what I, I ask you at this point. What do you think of GIMP? Uh, I, I personally, I, I kind of put it in the same category as Inkscape. They're great. I love the fact they exist. But generally, it's the UI that really lets me down, or if not that, the performance. So I really am happy to see that GIMP is focusing on both UI and performance stuff, because those were the things that really kind Kind of turned me off using it in the past and for general day-to-day -day photo manipulation i mostly use paint.net and a combination of affinity photo and a couple of other programs personally but if gimp gets there now that it's got hdpi support uh, now that the performance is improvement now that ui is getting better now that we've got dark theming and so on maybe with gimp 3 i will definitely consider giving it a shot again but i'm interested to hear what you guys think in your comments down below and uh yeah that's it i will talk to you all later goodbye